consider an example where you have to make the list of living things in a locality. It doesn't matter whether it is a human being, an animal or a plant. All that matters is a living thing. In this case, you would group them all as living things and you will not categorize them. Similarly, when you have to store some data, what matters to you is the content and not the data type and that's where you use generics. Generics in Java is a language feature that allows the use of generic types and methods. Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on generics in Java. Let's have a look at the agenda for the session. First, I will introduce the concept of generics in Java and also tell you why do you need it. After that, we will see the various types of Java generics. And moving further with the session, I'll tell you what is generic functions and also explain you along with an example. And finally, I will wrap up the session by talking about the advantages of generics in Java. Now, without wasting any further time, let's get straight into the module. First, let's understand what is generics in Java. Generics is a term that denotes a set of language features that are related to the definition and the use of generic types and methods. Java generic methods differ from regular data types and methods. So before generics, we use the collections to store any type of objects. It can be either a generic or non-generic object. Now, generics force the Java programmer to store a specific types of objects. So basically, this is all about what is generics. Now let's move further and see why do you need Java generics? If you look at the Java collections framework, then you will observe that most of the classes take parameter or argument of type object. So basically what happens in this form, they can take any Java type as argument and return the same object or argument. It can be either a homogeneous or heterogeneous that is not of a similar type. So sometimes in the Java application, the data type of the input is not fixed. The input can be an integer, a float or a Java string. In order to assign the input to the variable of the right data type, prior checks had to be conducted. In the traditional approach, after taking the input, the data type of the input was checked and then it was assigned to the variable of the right data type. When this logic was used, the length of the code and execution time was increased. So to avoid this, generics were introduced. So on using generics, the parameters in the code is checked at compile time automatically and it sets the data type by default. So this is where you need the concept of generics in Java as the execution time and the time that you invest in writing the code will also be decreased. So now that you know what is generics in Java and why do you need it, let's move further and see some of the types of generics. So basically there are four types. First, generic type class and you have interface, method and constructor. First, let's understand what is generic type class. A class is said to be generic if it declares one or more types of variables. So these variable types are known as the parameters of the Java class. Let's understand this with the help of an example. So here you can see I have created a class with one property X and the type of the property is object, correct? So what happens once you initialize the class with a certain type, the class should be used with that particular type only. For example, if you want one instance of a class to hold the value of type string, then programmer should set and get only string type. Since I have declared the property type to object, there is no way to enforce this restriction. A programmer can set any object and expect any return value from the get method since all Java types are subtypes of object class. So it's very simple, right? So here I'm creating a method for set and get and I am using the this keyword for reference. And then when I return the value of the X, it can be any type. But all the Java types are subtypes of object class. So I can set a property for integer and I can return string. Anything it can be. So this is how it works. The next type is generic type interface. An interface in Java refers to the abstract data types. They allow Java collections to be manipulated independently from the details of the representation. Also, they form a hierarchy in object-oriented programming languages. So let's take an example and understand this. So here I have created an interface for generic and I'm doing two operations for T1 and T2. So for T2 what I'm doing, I'm performing the execution. 
I'm passing two variables that is t1 and x. And next, what I am doing, I'm performing a reverse execution of whatever I have performed in the above statement. So when I create a class for generic and implement the interface, whatever I perform the execution will be reversed in the next execution. Suppose say while performing the execution, I'm passing a string variable and that can be easily converted to an integer variable when I'm reversing the execution. So basically all that matters is the type of the object and there is no way that I have to enforce a restriction or anything like that. It can be a string, integer, double, float, anything. So I hope you was able to understand how Chenbricks can be applied to interfaces. Now let's see what's next. The next type is generic type method. So generic methods are much similar to generic classes, but they differ from each other in only one aspect. That is the scope or type of information is available inside the method only. Generic methods introduce their own type parameters. So let's take an example and understand this. So in this case what happens if you pass a list of string to search in the method it will work fine But if you try to find a number in the list of a string it will give compile time error Yes, right because see first I'm using advanced for loop and I'm trying to check the element present in the list if the list is a string then it will match because always List is a string like list can be a string. It can't be an integer So when I try to find a number in this list it will give error, right? So that's how I have coded this program and that's how the generic type method tells you that is they introduce their own type parameters. There is no way that I have to define something or user have to define something. There's nothing like that. It's like they define their own type of parameters. So this analogy is similar for constructor as well. So if I talk about the generic type constructors the same goes here as well. So basically a constructor is a block of code that initializes the newly created object. A constructor resembles an instance method in Java, but it is not a method as it does not have a return type. The constructor has the same name as the class and looks like how I have written in the code. So here in this example, dimension class constructor has a type information as you can see that. So basically you can have an instance of dimension with all the attributes of a single type only. For example, you have a class dimension that is of a type T and I have created three variables. So when I create a constructor for all these three values you will get the length width and a height by using the this reference because I am giving this dot length is equal to length this dot width is equal to width and this dot height is equal to height so you cannot get any other parameters apart from this in this regard that is you can have an instance of dimension with all attributes of a single type there won't be any different types over here so this is how you can use type constructors so now let's see a small example of generics and understand how actually it works. So here I have created a class called test one and I have passed two variables that is T and U. T is a type of an object O1 and U is a type of an object O2. O1 and O2 are object of type T and U. Correct. So now for this I'm creating a constructor. And then I'm giving this reference that is this dot object one is equal to O1 and this dot object two that is O2 is equal to O2. And now I want to print the objects of T and U. So I'm basically creating a method called print and then I'm passing these two variables in this. And after that I'm creating a class called generic and inside the main method for the test one for object T and U one will be the string that I will be passing and the other one will be integer. So you can see here that I have not created any specific integer or string variable instead I'm just passing the type of an object that is T and U to be a string and an integer correct. There's no restriction or I don't have to enforce anything over here. So I'm going to create a new object for that that is test T1 and pass the variables as edureka and integer value will be 10. So when I give object dot print this object is nothing but this reference it will call the method or the object from this print. So what will happen it will display the elements present in the O1 and O2. So the elements present in O1 and O2 is nothing but the edureka and 10. So when I execute this let's see what happens. I'll run this as a Java application and let's see. So you can see here that in the output screen it set edureka and 10 which means there is no type restriction over here. It's very simple as you saw all that refers to is a type of the object like 
all the Java types are subtypes of object class and that is the reason I've taken object class and referred all the elements as objects and then pass whatever I wish to that is a string and an integer and then I print it. So this is how it works. Now let's see what is generic functions. So we can also write generic functions that can be called with different types of arguments based on the type of the arguments passed to the generic method and further compiler handles each of these methods. So let's see how it works. So I have a class called test in this I have created a method that is generic display and pass the element as t element. Okay, so now I have made this as static and I'm using the generic type T. Okay, so next when I'm giving system dot out dot print ln element dot get class dot get name plus element. Okay, so you can see here that in one single print statement. I'm trying to get the class get the name and also the element. So let's see how this one single line of code works. So inside the main method I'm calling generic method with integer argument. Okay. So generic display is nothing but this method, right? So the T element that is the type of the element is integer. So it is three four five six, correct? So next I'm again calling the generic method with string argument that is I'm calling the method that I've created above and I'm passing the element of type T as a string and after that we double. So you can see here that there are three different types of elements that is integer string and double and all these are of different data types, right? So when I say get class dot get name plus element it will say the class is this and the name will be the integer type and the element will be the value. Yes, let's execute and then you will understand what actually that statement does. As I told you element dot get class dot get name is equal to element, right? So element is Java dot lang is a type of the class dot integer is a type of the name first one is integer so element dot get class dot get name is equal to this value so same goes for next also element that is java dot lang is the get class dot string is get name and edureka is a value same goes with double as well so you can see here multiple types of arguments was being passed at one single instance so this is how the generic function works as you can pass n number of arguments by just referring to it as a type T. There is no specification. There is no restriction that you have to enforce it on all that you have to do is create the object of a type generic and then go on adding the values simple. Yes, that's how generic works. Now let's move into the last part of the session and understand some of the advantages of generics in Java. First code reusability. You can compose a strategy or a class or an interface once and use for any type or any way that you need. Next, type safety. As you just saw that whenever you use different types of arguments and when you cast it in different types of arguments, it was very safe, right? There was no hampering of the code or there was no destruction of the code or there was no any type issues when you try to cast the code or when you use Various types of code. There was no hampering between those codes. So obviously this type safety. Individual type casting is not required. Basically whenever you recover information from array list every time you need to type cast it. But type casting at each recovery task is a major migraine. So in order to eradicate that approach generics were introduced as you just saw you can use various data types and there is no casting of that required because you can use all of them at once and all that refers to is an object. So that's why I think typecasting is not required. Next, implementing a non generic algorithm. It can calculate the algorithm that works on various sort of items that are type safe as well. It can be a generic or non generic. No matter what, it will implement everything. So that was all about the advantages of Java generics. And with this, we come to end of this session on generics in Java. I hope you guys are clear with this topic. And if you have any queries, you can comment in the comment section below and we will reply back to you at the earliest. So that was all about today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. 
happy learning.